This is GPTV, your PBS station, serving Atlanta and all of Georgia. GPTV, bringing you the best. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. Georgia Public Television presents the 2001 Georgia High School Association Boys State Basketball Championships. Major funding for this broadcast is made possible in part by Georgia Natural Gas. IBEW Local 613. Georgia Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. And by South Trust Bank. Live from the centerplex in Macon, it's the GHSA 5A boys basketball title game between the Savannah Blue Jackets and the Brick Bar Patriots. And hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Championship Weekend here on GPTV. I'm Jim Giannacchio. Single A, double A, triple A, quad A in the books. Later on in the broadcast, we'll have highlights of all those games. For now, it's the 5A Championship, Berkmar and Savannah with the call downstairs. Let's go to Charles Ward and the elevator from Decatur, Mr. Herb White. Hey, guys. Hey, Jimmy, and good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 5A Championship. Charles Ward, Herb White with the play call. Herb, a rematch of the 1998 highest division in the state then quad a matchup between Berkmar and savannah good ball game on tap let's start out by talking about the blue jackets of savannah and how they actually made it here to the finals of the ball game tonight yeah let's take a look at that road to the final four i saw the semifinal game the other night and they beat some good ball clubs and uh i'll tell you that game the other night with marietta was really something I, it went back and forth back and forth i saw that savannah was toast with about five minutes to go and they really dug down and gutted it out and pulled it out right at the end. And part of the reason that they did, we'll take a look at the numbers on Jamal Green, a big factor in that Blue Jacket offense as well as the defense. Yeah, he is, but he had a subpar game the other night, at least offensively. He only had four points, and I bet Jamal's uh, going to look back at that one and say, hey, I'm going to make up for it tonight and uh, come out and really play in this ball game." Now for the defending champs of the Quad A division, the Patriots of Berkmar. Let's take a look at how they made it here tonight. Yeah, and another great ball game in the semifinals. Again, beating some good teams to get here. And uh, the other night, just a great great basketball game uh, but uh, they came out whoops we got the wrong uh, plastic up there <laughs> okay. well they did I knew fact. something but anyhow it was uh, Glenn Academy from Brunswick with the great Kwame Brown that Burke Mar was it was a classic confrontation of a great team against a great player went into overtime and uh, Kwame Brown couldn't get it down at the end of overtime and Burke Mar pulled it out talk about some of the personnel for the Patriots of Burke Mar High School as we look at some of the players warming up now, one of the players, Sean Ikba, is a big factor in that Patriot offense as well as the defense. And it should be a big challenge for them tonight in the ball game as we start taking a look at the starting lineup for both squads in tonight's ball game. A capacity crowd here in the centerplex in Macon. Expecting a good contest between these two squads. The defending state quad A champs against the team that they met in 1998 as we take a look at the starting lineup for the Blue Jackets of Savannah. It'll be Jamal Green at one of the guards. And a big night in the semifinals. Williams had a big night. He finished with 16 points in that ball game. Eric Young will go at the center. Tambon at the forward. And Nairi Brown at the other forward for the Blue Jackets of Savannah. That's a tough duo a set of players that they have starting the ball game tonight for Savannah. 31 and 1 on the season. Yeah, and they're a team that gets it done on defense, Charles. Uh, they average 60 points a game, but they limit their opponents to 45 points a game. And, uh, of course, we know Kirkmar, certainly a great offensive machine, averaging 85 points a game. Now, Savannah gave up 30 in the first half the other night, and I know that uh, Coach Jordan was not happy about that, but they came out, did a much better job in the second. They live and die off their defense and off the turnovers from their pressure. Coach Jordan, with that 31-1 record, doesn't think that that team is getting enough credit out of Savannah. They're 31-1, and, and he thinks over the throughout the entire country, a team like that should be getting a little bit more notoriety. But if they win it tonight, they'll certainly get some. Yeah, and I think, you know, sometimes when a team doesn't have one great standout player, players get a lot of publicity, and they don't really have that. They're a really well-balanced team. You know, they've got about four or five players from eight points on up to 14, and, and they don't have any superstars, but they are the quintessential team. And they're going to play a lot of people, and they're going to get after it, and they're going to try to create havoc with their full-court pressure. This Savannah team with a 23-game winning streak coming into the ball game tonight, their second appearance in four years in the finals 
of GSSHA are in here in the state of Georgia. So this is an experienced team in terms of playoff competition. So they certainly won't knuckle down to the defending champs of the Quad A division from last year. No, they won't. And a great basketball tradition out of Savannah. We take a look at the starting lineup for Burke Barr. The Patriots will go with Borders at one of the guards, Patman at the other. In this wing position, it'll be Williams and Arnold. And in the middle, Big Sean Ipka. Yeah. How many times have we seen these guys? It's like old home week with Borders and Ipka and Arnold and those guys. All seniors now. We've been watching them since they were freshmen and sophomores down here in the state tournament. And you know that uh, this is a kind of a team, a veteran team, that's probably going to come out and play well early. Their third appearance in the state finals in the last four years. So you talk about experience as well. They've got it, and they won it last year, so they're riding high off of that. This could be the first back-to-back -back champs in the largest division in the state of Georgia since we had it in 79 with Southwest Macon. So a lot on the line for both squads tonight. And boy, it should be a good ball game. Patriots at 28 at four. And the Savannah Blue Jackets at 31 and one. That's what we have on tap for you here in the 5A final matchup. We'll have it all for you after this break. Funding for a broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. You're watching member-supported GPTV, your PBS station, bringing you the best. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. Macon Central Plex Coliseum. Final ball game of the evening. It's the 5A matchup. The winner gets crowned 5A champ of the season. It's the Blue Jackets of Savannah and the Patriots of Baltimore. Getting ready to tie it up to determine who will be the champs for this year. Charles, I'll tell you, Savannah is really going to have to play their A game tonight because, again, they rely on pressure and they rely on turnovers from the other team. And this Burkmar team being the veteran team and with all the different ways they can score, and, and uh, Adrian Borders is a great point guard, Savannah is really going to have to turn it up and be on top of their game. Patriots went into overtime in their semifinal ball game. Any issue of fatigue coming into this one? I don't think so. These guys played 32 games all out all year, so they're in great shape. There's the tap, and we are underway with the 5A championship. It's controlled finally by the Blue Jackets. Just underway. Williams handling off front. That's Corey Young up top. Top of the key. Fires the three. And he gets the Blue Jackets on the board with the triple. Here comes the pressure. That's full court pressure now. As Patton comes across timeline. Green guarding. Left side Arnold. At the block they go, trying to get it to Ikba. Back out front, Arnold. Blue fire three-pointer. The runner spins out of there. And the Blue Jackets back the other way. Chance to build on a three-point lead. Williams right side. Lost to dribble. At the block he goes to Brown. Brown back out to Green. Green planks it at the front of the cylinder. Tambon backside rebound. Ten footer, he missed. Rebounds cleared by Arnold. And here come the Patriots now. Arnold tied up at the next strike. Taken away by Green. Green to the glass. Whistle down the low. Patman got it on the five. Well, just a classic matchup here, Charles. Again, Burkmar averaging 85 points a game, a great offensive machine against the tremendous defense of the Savannah Blue Jackets. And the other good thing is both teams matched up pretty well quickness and size-wise. There's not really a height discrepancy we've seen in some of the other ball games. Coach David Boyd in his fourth season at Burkmar. Take a look at his numbers, 104 to 21. Very impressive. Burkmar always very well coached. Yeah, I like David Boyd's theory. He takes his team, plays in those out-of-state tournaments all year long, plays great teams from around the country, and gets his team really tournament tough at the end of the year. Green's average on the season, 14 points, 4 assists. He's got his first and second points here in this 5A final. So Barkmar, across the timeline, they come right side. It's Borders, all the way through, at the block, nicely done over to Williams for the lay-in. 2-2-1 zone press Savannah's using, and they can get a layup on it if you can beat the initial pressure. Tambon right side. Off front Williams now. Patriots man to man. As Tambon handles right corner. Up top. 
And the move to the glass, shot it hard though. Long rebound comes away to the Blue Jackets. Green fires another three and fires again for the Blue Jackets. Two, Blue Jackets lead it. Herkmar back the other way, whistle down low. Two long range jumpers by the Blue Jackets early on here, Herb, a signal that they are interested in getting the outside game established. Yeah, they didn't shoot very well the other night. They're the kind of team you don't want to let them get out in front of you very far because that's really going to fuel that defense. And our officiating crew for this ball game, Dave Lowe, Andy Burke, and Randy Oglesby. Take a look at Coach Tim Jordan, his sixth season at Savannah. 154 wins for Coach Jordan. Mark Marr in the corner. Williams missed on the three-point offering. Rebounds cleared by Brown. Holes across the timeline. Works to the right side. Tambo. Up top. Aaron Pass. Collected by the Blue Jackets, though. Tried to get it up top to Young. Left corner. Now down at the block. They tried to work it inside to Jackson. We take a look at the three-point situation thus far. Savannah, three offerings. They've hit on two. Burkmar yet to come up with a three-pointer. They tried twice. And Tim Jordan staying with us. He's running players in and out. And they'll do that all night. They play about ten. And uh, Savannah, just a, a city with a great basketball tradition, Charles. Uh, Jenkins and Savannah and Beach and uh, all those great schools. Even back from Meyer, they've been having great teams. <laughs> I know that era well myself. I played a lot of those schools in Savannah when I was up in Statesboro. Back the other way on the runner on the inside. We're going to give him the basket. Nicely done by Patman on the move. And he draws a foul. Yeah, I saw that clip of you in the football playoffs, by the way, Charles. Quite an impressive figure out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> On the replay comes Patman. Look at the runner. Nicely done in the paint. They call him the pace setter. And there, he did set a nice little pace on the inside. Chance for the Patriots to cut into that blue jacket lead from the line. Patman converts. Full court pressure now by Buckmar. They get a steal in the backcourt, but a whistle. They're standing on the inbound line. You just got the sense that this is going to be a ball game that was going to be tightly played. They're going to be very well played in terms of the teams themselves. I agree. Veteran teams, they've been here before, and that's what you expect. Blue Jackets back the other way. Bounce it down low. The whistle down low. Borders had it, but he was standing on the inbound line. Left of the cylinder. Jackets inbounded. The whistle down low. Arnold commits the foul. Kirk Martin, a man to man right now, but Coach, uh, they will change up. Uses many, many different defenses throughout the night. David Boyd likes to change those defenses. Young with the inbound pass, and Williams back to Young at the block. He missed on the lay in. It'll stay with the Blue Jackets. And now they reverse the call, Herb. They'll take it back the other way. So the official's not standing on ego. <laughs> Borders handles in the back court. Now into the floor. To the glass. Whistle down low. Williams took a hard tumble in the paint. Or he came down right on the back of his neck. Looks like he's all right. He's moving. Racing to the glass. Looked like they locked legs and knocked him off balance. Certainly didn't go up under him, just uh, off balance. Take a look at the replay coming right side. Yeah, they just kind of sliced it up from under him. Boy, that's a tough fall there, though. Clark Williams, one of three players on this squad. Well, David Boyd asking if he didn't go up under him, but you could see on the replay, actually, that uh, it's created by the Burkmar player going in, actually created the, own, the contact. The deadline for entries in the Georgia Natural Gas, easy for me to say, True Blue Scholarship has been extended to April 16th. Stay tuned during the game for more information on nominating a deserving male and female student athlete. Georgia Natural Gas, True Blue Scholarship. Yeah, that's just for any parents out there that might want a few thousand dollars extra to help send their child to school. That's a good way to do it. As Williams gets a nice... Ovation from the crowd, headed back to the Burkmar bench. 
lot of activity going on earlier today in the state class a championship it was taylor county being crowned champs 58 39 over buford in the double a it was east hall defeating calhoun 78 67 triple a westover in a big way over mitchell baker 78 44 and in the quad a it was doherty over mays 66 54. A lot of good basketball action throughout the day. Same tomorrow. Yeah, Westover may want to go out and try to get in the end of the SEC tournament with the size <laughs> and the kind of players they got. Get the feeling they could play there very competitively. <laughs> back the other way. To take, uh, looking at the sideline, looks like Williams ready to come back in next dead ball as Green goes to the loop for the Blue Jackets, and he converts. So Savannah. A nice offensive flow. They lead it 10 6 early on. Whistle at the mid court strike. And Kevin B Bowker came in and uh, shot two free throws and made it the injured player. Uh, that's the only time you can substitute a free throw shooter, but he came in cold off the bench and knocked down two. That's a tough assignment. Well, free throws were a tough assignment for me anytime. <laughs> anyway, right? <laughs> Borders just in front of us to inbound it. Off front, that's it. They work at the right side. Williams for three. Had a good look. Couldn't put it down, though. Borders clears the errant shot. Patriots down at the block. Kick the heart to the glass. And a whistle inside. That Savannah defense swarms with the ball as well as any team I've seen, Charles. One guy's on you one minute, and as soon as you go to the basket, three are all around. Just about to say the same thing, Herb. Pick was quick within himself as you look on the replay here. But look how quickly the Blue Jackets get down at the block there to converge on them. No teaching speed. No, but that's great defense teaching to get to the ball. Absolutely. Ekba converts on the first. Take a look at his season average. 15 points. No, 10 rebounds. Double-double for Ekba on the season in terms of his average. He got them both from the line. He, one of three players for the Patriots, who joined their 1,000-point club this year. Blue Jackets there to the floor now. They bounce it in traffic to Young. Loose on the floor. Williams clears for Berkman. Cross dribble over to Borders. Borders in traffic to the center. And they got it to fall. Nice controlled break there. They didn't force it. They waited for something to happen. And it, something did happen. Just like that. They're tied at 10. Blue Jackets back inside the tape. Just like that. They break it with the stuff by Cummings. On the inside. Well, we talked. It's not bad defense. That's just excellent execution. Patriots. Their side of the floor now. Arnold handles in traffic over the Borders. On the move, whistle on the play. And borders guilty of the travel. <laughs> on the replay, back the other way. Inside for the Blue Jackets. The easy stuff on the inside by Cummings. Williams walks it across the timeline. Patman with the defensive assignment. Inside, trying to get it inside, but he threw it across the floor to Jackson instead. Blue Jackets lose it on the turnover. Yeah, Savannah not quite, not quite the polished offensive team uh, in the half-court offense that Bergmar is. They'd rather be going up and down the floor with a little speed. And they may surf a little when they get into that uh, half-court offense because Burkmar also plays good team defense. Absolutely. It's David Boyd fond of saying that offense sells tickets, but it's defense that wins championships. On the Patriot end of the floor, it was fouled. Green committed it. Turnover situation thus far. Very well Burkmar played. With the edge there. 3 2 over Savannah. But that's minimal. Patriots coming out front. Dangerous inbound pass. <laughs> and it's actually taken away by the Blue Jackets. That was kind of thrown up there with a prayer behind it. Boy, those two Jackets went after them. They just were relentless. Five seconds second violation. So two great defensive plays. One for Savannah getting the ball, and one for Borders coming out and putting the pressure on. So Burkmar takes it back. They trail by two. As Patman packs across the timeline left side. Steal. There we go to Blue Jackets once again. This one's stolen by Cummings to the glass. It's better. It falls good on the lane. 
so quick are the Blue Jackets. Nice anticipation at the corner. Patman left side. In traffic to Williams. And Williams over to Arnold. Quick moving first half of that quarter of basketball. Arnold on Tambo. Dunks it down low. Good job with the pass to Williams. And Williams with the finish to Berkmar. across the timeline. Under two minutes remaining in this first quarter. Tambon, right side, on the move, back, fires to 15, shot an air ball. If they get the rebound, Young clears. Blue Jackets with another set. Young, on Pitbull, jumper from 15, shot badly. Backside rebound to the Jackets once again. They'll live with that. Left side for three. Jackson had a look. No result. Tambon with another backside rebound for the Blue Jackets. Set. Inside the paint and finally get the runner by Cummins. Well, that really hurts Coach David Boyd over there. Three offensive rebounds and finally the basket. Sure, that many opportunities, you're going to come away with something. Hackman across the timeline. Borders left side now. Trying to get it to Ekpa. He'll go on the move instead. Lost it in the paint. Good defensive work by the Blue Jackets. Up the floor, they come Coles. Right side, all the way through to the glass. Shot it behind the cylinder. Basketball to the Patriots. Took it a little too far that time. They actually had about a three-on-one coming down the floor there. But Coles too far into the basket. Probably should have slowed down, gotten the ball to the middle. Got a little more balance on the floor. Savannah with mass substitutions once again. Under a minute remains in this first period. 16-12. Blue Jackets, don't know if it's a surprise, but they have the lead at this point. As Borders comes to the timeline. They're going to trap him out front. Two Blue Jackets jumped Border. Borders across the timeline. Savannah's one of those teams, they're going to push it as far as they can. They're going to hack you and hack you, and if the officials start calling it, they probably back off a little bit. As long as they can make contact and not get it called, they're going to be all over you. Ekpa on the inbound play, over the Borders, in the paint, Borders to the glass, and he got the lay in. So Borders, they call him the Patriot Missing. A little aerial attack on that play. Back the other way, spinning in the paint is Williams with the jumper. Nicely done by Williams. Nice, under control. So they trade rocks. Borders back the other way now. See if this is the final shot. Whistle on the play. Patriots guilty of the travel. Thought they may try to play it down to the end, Herb. But they yeah. elected to go on inside with it, but he committed the travel violation. Well, they... I would have held for one, but he got the ball in the paint, thought he could make the move and get the basket. He just traveled. But Savannah really liked to get another two here. Here come the Blue Jackets across the timeline. Jackson kicks it left side, Tambon. In traffic, right side with a short jump from about five. Shots off the mark by Williams. And that'll bring us to the end of the first period. Leading it, 18-14 Blue Jackets over the Patriots. Back with the start of the second after this. Funding for a broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. We are back live at the Macon Central Plex, getting set for the second period. Rob Tribble standing by courtside. Rob. Charles Burkmar is one of those teams that is absolutely despised by the other teams in its region. They have a certain swagger. They play with a little bit of arrogance. Meanwhile, on the Savannah side, they're just looking for a little respect. They're 31 and 1, and it seems like no one even knows about them. So I guess it's a case of arrogance against persecution. Who's going to win out? Thanks, Rob. That's a heavy philosophical <laughs> question. It may, may take a few minutes for us to ponder that one, Rob. I know. We're going to be the halftime break to get through that one. 
as we get set for the second period. Borders will inbound it for the Patriots. The Rob's known for his deep thinking thing this year. Patriots out front, firing the missile. Arnold, he missed on it. Williams got the backside rebound. He was stripped by the Blue Jackets. The whistle's down low. It'll stay with Burkmar on their side of the floor. Arnold inbounds it down low to Ikta. Nicely done on the inbound play. Ikta found the seam. Little half court pressure now. Looks like a 1 3 1 trap, possibly. Coming to the timeline, it's Williams. Steps into the four. And the trap works effectively for Burkmar. They come away with the steal. Up the floor, Clark Williams to the glass. Missed on the lay in. Rebounds taken by Green. Here come the Blue Jackets. Green spins in the paint, pushes left side. Nicely done on the block as the shot falls off. Brown missed it. And the track race starting here now at the center plex. Arnold into the front court. Ekba, left side he goes. Patrick. They can tie it with a two pointer here. Borders at the block. Ekba, the workhorse, to the glass. Got the lay in, and he was fouled. Nice job to finish after the contact. Knew he was going to get hit and stayed under control. You know, Charles, I like that by David Boyd. It's one thing to pressure somebody 94 feet for the whole game. Let's see the replay on that. You see, good job. He knew he was a bigger player, and he knew he'd get the basket. But I tell you, I always hated to play against a team that changed their defenses. They give you one look for five minutes, and then a little while later, they throw another look at you. It can be very disconcerting. Sometimes you can adjust to a team that pressures the whole game. Yeah, sometimes it's tough to establish your consistency if they keep changing on you. As Ekba converts on the free throw, and Burkmar takes the lead. What you want to do in this 1 3 1 trap, they will try to double team in the corners, cut off the passing lane. Up top with the jumper, Williams converts again. But they didn't cut off that passing lane that time. Williams had 16 in the semifinals. On his way right here to another fifth contest for the Blue Jackets. Out front. Patman, left side borders now. At the block, Williams working on Tambon. Got the shot to the cylinder, but he missed. Ekpa, backside rebound in the putback. He left it on the cylinder. Rebound, cleared though. Patriots down at the block. Williams tied up. Whistles. Offensive. That was a great pass for Williams, but when he came down, he came down on the Savannah defensive player, and they called the foul. Balls called on Arnold for the Burkmar Patriots. So we go back the other way, Herb. And the 1-3-1 trap, they're going to stick with that. Williams looking at it as he comes to the timeline. Kicks it right side green. They go down at the block to Young. Young comes from Virto. Basketball's taken by Brown. Jump ball called. Arrow keeps it with the Blue Jackets. A nice block there by Arnold. The Blue Jackets right of their cylinder to inbound it on the replay. Taking a look down the low. Young tried to get it to the cylinder. We come back to live action. Borders back for the Patriots. Right side, Patman, whistling on the play. Patman's pushing off. Yeah, it looked like he threw that forearm out. He was trying to control the ball and avoid the steal, and he stuck that forearm on the Savannah player's chest. Blue Jackets will have it now. Savannah doing a good job against the 1-3-1. They've got their people deep in both corners, and they're throwing over that trap. You can listen and watch all of the state playoff games on the Internet. So they go to www.gpb.org and follow the links. All the games will be available for the entire month. That's www.gpb.org. On the Blue Jackets end of the floor, they'll inbound it right of the cylinder. Green tried to kick pass on the inside. I don't think everybody was quite set for the play. Green right corner to Young. Up to Tambon. Williams handles it front. He's tied up. Out of the post. Kick it down low on the reverse lane. And Cummings did a nice job nearly inside the paint. Great job. Savannah's doing exactly what you want to do. They're not trying to beat that pressure with the dribble. They're just making the great passes. 
We talked about experienced teams. That was a good symbol of it right there. Ekba for the Patriots in traffic. Down low at the block, Williams. Challenge down low. Foul's going to be called on Eric Young, the senior from Savannah High. Really a pleasure to do a, a game when two teams are a veteran like this and a, and a big game, and they're both playing well. Williams will go to the line for the Patriots. Both teams also good free throw shooting teams that you'd expect from teams that uh, have a lot of seniors and juniors. Williams converts on the first. He had 25 in the semifinal ball game against Glen Academy, and that was a big challenge for the Patriots of Burkmar to yeah. defeat the Glen Academy team with Brown on. Yeah, Burkmar with their tallest player at about 6'6", and Kwame Brown, just a great, great high school player. Williams averaging 20 points on the season. Missed on the second offering from the line. New Jackets stand on the floor. Out front, Williams on the move again. Williams changed his shot, still got it to the cylinder. Long rebound comes away to Williams and the Patriots. They try it down low. Iron pass by Williams. It's loose on the floor. And they're going to say that Harry Williams was out of bounds and stepped back in. So they're going to give the basketball to Burke Barr as you take a look at the field goals. Savannah putting it up a lot more. They converted on 10 of 21. Burkmar with just 13 shots in this first half. Russell inside the paint. Clark Williams guilty of the offensive foul. Now that great defensive foot movement again. You don't play defense with your body. You play it with your feet. Speaking of Kwame Brown, I just soon he go on to the NBA, Charles, because as an old Bulldog fan, I don't want to see him in that Gator uniform next year. <laughs> Could cause some problems for the guys in red and black. And we had our share last night. Yeah. <laughs> Blue Jackets across the timeline. Good backward pressure there as he was tapped by the Patriots. But the Blue Jackets back inside the paint. That's Young to the center. And he banks it in. So the Blue Jackets very patient on the inside. They're getting the results they want. Hackman, the right side with the pass, Arnold. Now up top, Ikba. Left side, Patman at the block Waters now. Waters coming back from five with the jumper. He missed. There's a whistle there. Yeah, Tim Jordan didn't like it, but that's, that's the one they're going to have to call. They can't let Savannah get away with all the bumps, or they're just going to have too much of an advantage. So Adrian Borders, the senior, will go to the line for the Patriots. Yeah, we've seen three great big men in this tournament. We had the Kwame Brown, we mentioned, and Marcus Campbell with Westover in the game before, who unfortunately is going to be a Bulldog, but at Mississippi State. And then a Bulldog, huh? Yep. Alexander Johnson in the Westover, in the, in the last ball game for Darty uh, is going to be a great player. He already is, and he's got another year left. So, State of Georgia continuing to put out those great big men. Tambon back on the floor for the Blue Jackets. Borders got one. He missed on the second. Rebounds cleared by Williams. Four minutes remaining, first half. Green up top for the Blue Jackets. Working the screen. Right side on the weave. Tambon free. Fires a three. Had a good look and he dropped it. Yep, he was in his rhythm then. You knew that was going. And Bergmar has gone back into the straight man-to-man. -man. Came out of the 1-3-1 trap with no success that time. Blue Jackets really set that shot up for Tambon, though. They've been working it inside so hard in this second period. Tambon free from the outside. Patriots kind of collapsed on the defense. Patman. Built the other double dribble in the front court. Tight pressure by the Blue Jackets caused it. Yeah, a little bit of a crisis here now for Burkmar. They haven't scored the last two or three trips down the floor, and Savannah began to play with some confidence. Williams to the timeline. Turnover situation, just what you talked about, her. Burkmar with 11 turnovers. Savannah only at five with five at this point. Six now. Six as Borders clears it away. To the glass, Borders missed on the lay in there. Williams clears for the Jackets. They've got a five on three. Back out to Tambon behind the arc. Now up top green. Who will fire the three-pointer? Missed it right side. The backside rebound comes away to Brown. Across the floor. They go to Williams for three. Shot it high and hard. Finally cleared by Burkmar. Arnold up the floor. Borders for streaking. But he can't catch up with it. Yep, Savannah's forcing them to try to play a little too fast, maybe even for Burkmar. And haven't seen the stats, but I got to feel like Savannah's winning the war of the boards right now. Patriots turn it over, so the Blue Jackets come back the other way. They enjoy a six-point lead. 
Left corner, Tambo. Back up to Williams. And Tambo in the corner. Green on the move. Left corner, jumper for 15. He missed. Nickel clears. Out in the pass, Borders. Ahead of the fray. Borders. Whistle on the play. A piece of foul called on Borders. Boy, a lot of movement there, Herb, but they got the call. Savannah is just a team. It's unbelievable how they get back. Borders was out in front, and before he finished his shot, three Savannah players were in the paint. It was a close call, but watch this. Now, there'll be two more guys from Savannah right behind. Look at that. That's four guys. That's unbelievable. Harry Williams took the charge. And as you indicate, they're so quick getting back down the floor. Ordinarily, the Patriots think that that's probably going to be an easy lay-in. The hottest new program to air on PBS is coming soon. 14 high school students capture their lives on video. Don't miss American High, beginning April 4th, right here on GPTV. See what David Boyd can come up with over there for the last couple minutes of this half. I know he'd like to see his team get back in here. Come on, now. 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 Come on, be the first time there's a state champion in 5A, and certainly this game being played at the pace Savannah wants it, and also in the scoring pace as uh, they like uh, the lower scoring game. Holes across the timeline for Savannah. Tambon works it right side. Now up top on the weave. Cummings, Cummings with the jump over Arnold. He missed. Backside putback by the Blue Jackets. It's off. Borders clears. He wants to run. Borders right side all the way to the glass. Three Blue Jackets down low, converging on it. Somebody fouled them. But boy, you talk about the pace for the Blue Jackets. That's good transition basketball. That's just the blue curtain. I don't know if I've ever seen a team get back and get into the paint and get to the ball as fast as this Savannah team. On the replay, they call the foul on Tambon. Yeah, it looked like it was not on Tambon. I'm Jackson not even sure it was a foul. Jackson had a lot of ball there. Borders with the free throw. He connects on the first. else to look out for, Charles. We've seen Savannah substituting freely throughout the first half, and I, you know, uh, Burke Mars maybe used seven players. I'm not sure, but uh, that could certainly begin to tell a tale late in the third, fourth quarter. Borders gets the seventh point on the night. New Jackets continuing to lead across the timeline, Williams. Take a look at the rebounding situation in this ball game. What do I know? Slightly ahead, 13 to the left. <laughs> nice try on those. Savannah's made it count. Good. They've got a lot of offensive <laughs> rebounds. Left side on the move, Williams. Shot rejected. Good defensive work by Borders, trying to save it out of bounds. It'll stay with Savannah. Coach Timothy Jordan. They're supposed to give me those stats before I talk about them and then put them up on the screen, Charles. Well, you set yourself up. You put yourself <laughs> on the run. Williams out front. Patman guarding. Tight defense by Patman. Left side. On the move. Cummings down the left. Hunter Hunter wide open. Neary Brown for the easy lay in. Savannah playing a flawless almost basketball game right now. They lead at 29 23. Patman handles out front for Burkmore. Front borders, side steps the defender behind the arc for three. Looked at it, he missed it though. Backside lead on the lead. It was an attempt to put back by Arnold, but he missed. Don't know if Tambon actually hit it for the Blue Jackets, but it comes back the, the other way nonetheless. Great move by Borders. He's using the aggressiveness of the Savannah defense. Got him off their feet. Got a good look. Couldn't get it down. Green handles out front for the Blue Jackets. Now over to Williams. We'll see if they play. Down to the end, if they can. They're working the weave. 
Now they tie up Williams. Williams gives it over to Cummings. Cummings all the way through. Clark rejected. Williams rejected the shot. Good defensive work for Clark Williams. Back the other way. Patman to Ickma. Right side. Arnold squares for three. Got a look. He missed it though. Would have been big had he hit it. Rebound. Backside Brown. Eight seconds remaining. First half. Williams for three. He missed it. Air ball. Rebound comes away to Ickba. At the half, it's a 29-23 lead for the Blue Jackets of Savannah over Burkmar. And as you indicate, Herb, the pace seemingly favoring the Blue Jackets at this point. Yeah, they've had things go their way. Certainly anybody's ball game, six points with a team like Burkmar doesn't mean much. Rob Tribble standing by with one of the coaches. Rob. Well, Coach Jordan, tell me about the first half. Seems like both teams are playing good defense. Every shot is contested. Neither team can really get an open look. Well, that's the kind of game we expected going in. Burke Mullins one of the top defensive teams in the state, and we are, we'd like to think we are too, so we know it's going to come down to who plays the best defense in the first half of pretty even. Well, it seems like their defense was paying some dividends. They were getting some fast-break opportunities, but your guys had the presence of mind to get the charge, or they're just plainly missing the easy layup. Well, like I said, it's two tough teams that's battling out there tonight, and uh, who plays the best defense for the second half is going to come out the winner. All right, good luck in the second half. That's it from down here on the floor. Thanks, Rob. 29-23 at the break. It's Savannah over the Patriots of Burkmar. We'll take a timeout. Back with more after this. Funding for a broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. This is GPTV, your PBS station, serving Atlanta and all of Georgia. GPTV, bringing you the best. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. And welcome back to the Centerplex in Macon, the 5A state championship. We're at halftime in Savannah, leading Burkmar 29 to 23. It's been quite a day of basketball here at the Macon Coliseum. Five games today. We got five games tomorrow for the girls' championship. So a big weekend uh, yet to go here on GPTV. All right, let's go downstairs to courtside and Rob Triple. Rob? With Savannah High's principal James Green. Mr. Green, you guys are like the Rodney Dangerfields of the state. You're 31 and 1, but you don't feel like you get all the accolades you deserve. Tell me about that. Well, we don't score a lot of points. But we play a lot of defense, and so we keep the other team from scoring points. So what we look at is when the game's over with, we want to have the one point or the two point that's up. And as long as we do that, we'll be fine. Tell me about your days at Payne College. You're the only forward out of Payne College to be drafted in the NBA. Just tell me about your stint there. The only player in the history of Payne to be drafted. I was drafted in 1972 by the Atlanta Hawks. Played forward, uh, very good score. You just missed Herb White by a couple years. Thank you very much. Okay. Good luck to you guys in the second half. Hope that drive down 16 is pleasant. Let's go back to Jim Janakio. All right, thanks, Rob. All right, I tell you, it's it's been quite a day for basketball. You know, uh, single A, double A, triple A, quad A in the books. This is the 5A game. We'll be wrapping up in about an hour. And then tomorrow we're going to bring you about another 8 to 10 to 12 hours of basketball. And there's your, there's your games for tomorrow. Uh, the Class A game, Jefferson and Wesleyan. The Class AA game, Union County takes on GAC. And those, those will be the early games beginning on GPTV. Let's go back downstairs now to Rob Triple. All right, Jim, our parade of principals continues. We have Mr. Markham, Jim Markham from Burkmar. Tell me about the running success. How do you manage to keep David Boyd on the sideline? It seems like colleges will be coming after him. Yeah, he's, uh, he's an outstanding basketball coach and uh, an exceptionally good classroom teacher as well. He's very dedicated, uh, really cares about the kids, and uh, I anticipate that the day will come when the call comes from a college. Just tell me about what coming to a championship game or winning a state title does for the student body. Does the food in the cafeteria taste better? Are there less discipline problems? What does it do? It, um, it gives uh, every kid in the school a shot in the arm. Uh, <clears throat> you can't imagine what last year's championship did and uh, the opportunity to have a second opportunity to repeat. Uh, every kid in the school is walking around with his chest out about a foot. All right, thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Jim Giannacchio, back to you. 
All right, Rob, big day of basketball. We have highlights from earlier today. Here we go. Fasten your seatbelts. It's the single-A championship, Buford and Taylor County. Akeem Hardman had a big game and an easy layup there. Edwin McCrary played a, a big role here on the follow-up and jam. Buford hung tough most of the afternoon. Rico Brown from downtown with the three-pointer. Taylor County, look at this. Antoine McLean with an easy layup. Buford hung in, though. Rico Brown's cousin, Theo Brown, also dialing long distance, three-pointer, Woolsworth within 10 points, and McCrary took over. Look at McCrary, one dunk, McCrary with another dunk. The celebration is on, Taylor County wins at 58-39. The double-A championship, let me tell you, that was a ball game in itself. East Hall took on Calhoun, the Yellow Jackets. East Hall, a winner, 78-67. to Casey Baxter was the... One of the big hitters for Calhoun. Here's the highlights from the double-A championship from earlier today. And as I mentioned, Casey Baxter had a good ball game. Uh, a very good shooter from the outside. Here, the soft touch with the left hand, and he connects on the jumper. Derek Jones, they watch this three-pointer from the side. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Nice shot by Jones. East Hall was too tough. Causey to Causey to wear underneath. And Mark Causey, what can you say about this young gentleman? A three-pointer from long distance. That man can shoot the lights out. Kevin Anderson, a great game for Calhoun. He's tough down low with the big turnaround jumper. But in the end, it was East Hall on the transition, off the break. Mark Causey's brother, Matt Causey, connecting on the layup. And the celebration is on for East Hall. They win it 78-67 over Calhoun. Congratulations to head coach Seth Vining and his entire staff at East Hall. Triple-A highlights. Here we go. Westover and Mitchell Baker. The Patriots looking good. Darrell Williams hits the three-pointer. Mitchell Baker on the off the steal. Jarvis Williams beats Derek Haywood for an easy layup. I'll tell you who had a good game, though, is this guy, number 21, Greg Tinch. Check this out. Yeah, you betcha. And then off the fast break, it's Tinch again. These guys know how to play. Tinch had 20 points on the game, but it was Mitchell Baker coming back. Quinton Davis cans the three-pointer. And the Eagles stay in it, but here come the Patriots. It's all Patriots in the end. Darrell Williams with three of his 24 points, a game high. Marcus Campbell closes it off right there. And the Eagles lose to the Patriots, 78-44. Head coach Willie Boston retires after 37 years on top, exactly where he should be. All right, now the Quad A Championship. Another great game. Doherty and Mays, they played this one just moments before this our 5A game. That was match, uh, Matthew Mitchell uh, to Marcus Long. And then Jason Woods for Doherty. Watch Mitchell now again. He'll stick the three-pointer here. Big game for Alexander Johnson of Doherty. Bang, this guy can hit from the outside. Watch his moves on the inside. Very dominating throughout this ball game. Eric Wester got involved in the action a little bit. Nice little foul there by Wester. But it was Mitchell for Mays that kept them close. Mays canning the long jumper for three. But Alexander Johnson, you know, we showed him outside, we showed him inside. Now watch the big man with this dribbling technique. You gotcha. Doherty wins it big over May, 66-54, the Quad A champions. There's your highlights, the more on the 5A coming up with Charles Ward and Herb White. We'll take a timeout. You're watching the state basketball championships from Macon. Funding for a broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. You're watching member-supported GPTV. Your PBS station, bringing you the best. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. We are almost set to begin the third period. 29-23, Savannah leading Burke Marr in that first half of basketball. A lot of good highlights coming out of that first half. But for Savannah in that first half, take a look as they started it out. They go with Tambon from outside for three, and he drains it. That was a testament about how they were going to play the ball game the first half. Patton back the other way with the runner in the lane for Burkmar to try to keep it even. But back the other way, down low on the inside, it was Cummings.
Reeves for the dunk for Savannah. Now back inside again with the reverse layup. That's Cummings once again, and they finish where they started off. Camon draining it for three in that first half. And Savannah leading at 29-23. Take a look at some of the stats from this first half, Herb. Yeah, you can see Savannah with 31 uh, field goal attempts, 14 more field goal attempts. Rebounds just about even. Turnovers really bad, and that's why Berkmar has not had the number of shots that Savannah has had from the turnovers. And uh, Savannah, the kind of team, Charles, it's very, very difficult to come back on if you get down much more than six points. If you get into double digits, you can just about forget it. You would think that the points off turnovers would be higher for Savannah, but that the turnover situation really is a problem for Berkmar more so than the points coming to exactly. Savannah. Steal on the inbound play just where we left off. Cummings trying to have his stuff. He missed this one. Basketball bounced to Tambon, though. Blue Jackets, even when they do wrong, they get a right out of it. On the runner, they missed. And Berkmar back the other way. It is a head shaker, isn't it, Herb? <laughs> well, I'm telling you, he not only missed it, he bought into his career with that sure. move, but, uh, you know, he came right out at the beginning of the second half, probably wasn't really loose and uh, not ready to go up like that. And, with so much speed, his feet just flew out from under him, but he managed to get his hands down to break his fall, thank goodness. So Cummings providing a little bit of excitement as we start the third period. Charles Ward and Herb White with the 5A play call. As Borders, far side of the floor, will inbound it for Berkmar. Over to Ekpa. Right corner, Williams with the jumper, shot an air ball. Backside rebound, Neary Brown and the Blue Jackets. Picked up by Borders. Green works it right side. Trying to get it to Tambon at the block if they can. He has to come out to get it. Now up top. It's Crawford handling the basketball. And throw it out of bounds. Nice overplay over there. Burkmar gets the turnover. And it's important for Burkmar to really try to get their offense into some kind of uh, rhythm here to start the second half. That first jump shot was not what they were looking for. Crawford. Only a 10th grader for Savannah High out on the floor there. Caused a turnover. They take him out of the ball game after that. Hackley on the Patriots side of the floor. Arnold back coming away from the basket. Fires the three-pointer. Shot it hard. High rebound cleared by Williams. The right side to go with the pass. Now left side with the basketball, it's Williams. Inside the paint, Tambon comes away with the loose basketball, and he's got the roll of the ball good for the Blue Jackets. They just don't give up on any ball that's on the floor. They stay with it. 31-23. After the basket. Patriots back the other way. They lost it in traffic. Comes clear to Williams. The left side, they go to Tambon again. Young. Three Williams, Kyle Green has. Young again. And back to Green. Tambon lost it out of bounds. They were patient. Charles. I don't mind being your color man. He's going to have to pay me extra if, you, if I'm going to be your technical advisor, too, on your equipment. <laughs> I think I'm okay, okay here, Herb. <laughs> All right. All Herb. right, Burkmar has settled for jump shots twice down the floor now. I'd like to see him get into something and get a little better shot. Hatman in the backcourt. Working on Cole. Hatman inside the paint. Down oh. low to Ikba, just like you indicated, Herb. They got the basket on the inside. Ekpa for two. Coles. Right corner. Up top green. Green in traffic. Nice pass across the floor. Inside Brown for the easy lay in. Savannah, a very unselfish team. They don't care who scores. Lead it by eight. Patrick spins in the paint. In traffic. Down to Ekpa. Ekpa with the basket. As well. well, that's a good adjustment there by uh, Patman. He's recognizing that he can beat his man off the dribble, and once he clears and gets inside and draws the defense, he's dished off twice. Nice. A couple of 
substitutions for the Blue Jackets as we look at the replay. Nick put got the inside position. That's one of those ones, if you're going to come over the back and foul him, don't give him the basket. Right, I'll make him pay for it. I'll make him pay for it. That's put it a lot of points on the night. Four of four from the free throw line. Blue Jackets pressure in the backcourt now. They get it into the four with a pass right side Brown. Brown to green, green in the paint. Runner for five, shot it hard. Hector clears for the Patriots. Porter streaking back the other way. Porter's to the glass. Good recovery by Brown on defense. But Clark Williams there with the putback for the Patriots. An eight-point lead is shrunk to three and a steal now. Patriots coming back the other way and can tie it with a three. Two will bring him within one. Clark to the glass. He missed. Clark Williams on the miss. Basketball belongs to the Blue Jackets. Well, you heard Tim Jordan at halftime before he went in said whoever plays the best defense this half is going to win. Burkmar has really turned up the heat defensively now with the full court pressure. Backcourt, Blue Jackets, whistle in the backcourt. Got a timeout called by Coach Jordan and the Blue Jackets recognizing that they were having some problems with that Patriot press. Well, they had a three on two. It was a good timeout because Savannah was about to have a layup there, unfortunately. Oh, listen to me. Try to sneak in and hear Coach Boy if he can. Snap the hell out of him. Scramble. Oh, no one wanted more to do. We can tell you what he said in the second sentence. Yep. No secret formula there. Just get after it, trap the heck out of them, and scramble. Just get after the ball, and that's what they've done, and that's how you win ball games with two evenly matched teams. You're just going to have to out-hustle the other team, but quite a task to out-hustle the Savannah crew. You can paraphrase phrase Coach Boyd. That means leave it all on the floor. Blue Jackets, as we take a look at the field goal percentages in this quarter. 205 for Savannah. Burkmar at 50%. 3 of 6. Well, the main thing for Burkmar is now they're getting the same amount of field goals anyhow that Savannah was before there was quite a discrepancy because of the turnovers. Brown converted on the lay-in for the Blue Jackets. The lead is 5. Patton with a running jumper from 10. He missed it. The rebound cleared backside by Young. So the Blue Jackets seemingly have staved off, at least temporarily, a comeback by the Patriots the Burkmar. Green down at the block. Young turning on it, but he missed on the shot. But a whistle. Down low. Hickler's going to have some sore ribs in the morning from that one. Got caught the elbow right in the rib cage, but stayed with it. That's four personals. On black. Eric Young. Eric Young. Six foot seven senior with four. And that may pose some problems for Coach Jordan and the Blue Jackets. It's going to hurt him on the board. Borders to the timeline. Right side on the penetration. Stops, pops, and drops for the Patriots. Hal Greer-like shot there. And a quick penetration pull up. It's a three-point Blue Jacket lead now. Pressure by the Patriots in the backcourt. Tambon into the four. Cross dribble to the glass. Nicely done, but he shot it hard. Rebound by Ekla. Up the floor, Borders. Cross the middle by Borders. Down in the corner to Nelson. Back to Borders. On the move. To the glass. He's fine. Well, Borders, the senior guard, he's taking it on himself to lift his team and get them started. And uh, he's been the difference so far in the second half, Charles. They go with four seniors and one junior in the starting rotation. Take a look at Borders, one of the seniors, trying to lift him on his own shoulders inside. Coach Boyd over there, he's got all kinds of hand signals for his defense. He just flashed about 14. I don't know which one was the right signal. I'm trying to decode it, but I haven't broken it yet. Borders, six points and four rebounds on the night. Picks up a seventh there from the line. Jackson into the lineup for the Blue Jackets. Let's take a look at the signals from Coach Boyd. Well, we'll know once we see what kind of defense they set up here. Borders got them both from the line. It meant full court pressure. One, two, one, one. They all they get a steal in the backcourt. Clark Williams with the runner. He got it in the paint. It meant get the steal in the basket, Charles. Williams with the basket. Patriots lead it by one. Brown back 
the other way for the Blue Jackets. Kicks it out for the three-point effort. That's Jackson. Hit the front of the center. Chases down his own rebound on the left hand of Lee, and nicely done by Sean Jackson. Borders in the backcourt for Burkmar. Pace starting to quicken just a bit here. Borders kicks it down the low. Oh. Oh, no, he got it for Burkmar. Starting to solve that pressure now. Jackson into the four. Pass left side to Cummings. Up top to Williams now. Williams in the paint. Running jumper from 10. Williams drops it. They left him uncontested. Savannah returned the favor. They're turning it up offensively a little bit. This is what you want to see in your final ball game. 5A championship. They're going back and forth. Auto. Up top to Nelson. Nelson had a big semi-final ball game from the free throw line for Burkmar. The right side, he kicks it on him. Auto for three. Rebound by Green. Blue Jackets with a quick step across the timeline. Williams, baseline, whistle. Nelson commits the foul. 7,500 uh, or so rabid basketball fans gathered in here to see it. I'm telling you, when they emptied out the, the building after those first three games, people didn't want to leave. You can listen and watch all of the state playoff games on the Internet. Simply go to www.ubtv.org and follow the links. All the games will be av available for the entire month. That's www.gpb.org. Back to live action at the baseline. Patriots get another basket of steal on the inbound play by Williams. Williams to the glass. they wave the shot off. Foul was called by Jackson. Now Savannah's got to regroup. Bergmar's really, I think they've scored about their last five possessions, and they've stolen the ball twice now in the last five possessions. That'll be Clark Williams to inbound it. They say the foul occurred before the shot. So Nelson will inbound it for Burkmar. They lead it. Maybe just momentarily. Tapped out of bounds by Tambor. We've had seven lead changes in this ball game, so the indication's right. Nelson inbounds it to Borders. On the move, Williams run up to the glass. Tumbling bodies inside the paint. Offensive foul on Williams. Burkhardt has been a lot more efficient when they've had their guards handling the ball and drawing the defense and then passing off. That time a little too aggressive going to the hoop. Nice job there drawing the charge by Andrew Tambon. Tambon took the charge. So the Blue Jackets with a minute nine remaining in the third period. Trail it by one. Charles, you couldn't have got another fan in here with a shoehorn in the double-A and triple-A and single-A games. I mean, it was completely packed standing room only. You're absolutely right. I saw those ball games and the fans. It was packed. Williams up the floor on Nelson. Left side spinning to the right in the paint. Runner gets the center and pops out. Williams clears for Burkmar now. Under a minute remains in the third. Stolen in the front court by the Blue Jackets. They swarmed him and they got it. You can't take it for granted just when you're bringing the ball up the floor because they're going to come from behind and knock it away. Williams right side with the pass to Cummings. Up top, Tambon now. Now back to Harry Williams. Williams left side in the paint. Stops with the runner from 10. He missed it. Tap attempt to put back by Cummings off the mark. Rebound cleared by Clark Williams. Double teamed. He takes the timeout. Williams with a couple of nice moves in the lane. Couldn't get either one of them to go down. And we got us a ball game, Charles. 40-39 with 23 seconds remaining in the third period. Never any doubt about that, but boy, have they stepped up the intensity in this third period, Herb, and it's showing. Well, Bergmar has just found out that it's going to be a low-scoring game. They've accepted that and decided they're going to come out and play the same kind of defense Savannah was. Surveying the crowd here in the center flex and making. Look for some great plays down the finish with all these senior players out here. It's going to be a great last quarter. Coach Jordan said that his Blue Jackets passed a gut check in the semifinal ball game. Seems like it's shaping up the same way here. Will be a gut check. 
as the Patriots walk it toward the fourth court. Waters, right side, back off front to Edgar. Left side, Nelson now on the move on Tambo. Back out to Edgar. Now to Borders. They've got to hurry now. Borders double teamed out front. They'll try to get it off. Edgar got it off. The shot falls short. At the end of three, it's 40 39. The Patriots of Burke Bar over the Blue Jackets of Savannah. Final frame coming after this break. Funding for broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. Final quarter of the 5A championship, Charles Ward and Herb White with the play call. Herb, intensity certainly has picked up in that third quarter. We'll see if it continues in the fourth. Yeah, I don't, well, it's not that many of the team is going to let up here, Charles. It's just going to come down to uh, who's got the gut check, like you said. We're going to do a little gut check right here on the announcers and see what happens. A lot of it down there, I'll tell you that, as we get set for the fourth. Big ball game, the winner but gets crowned 5A champion. It's a 40-39 lead for the Patriots of Berkmar. You caught me off guard with that. <laughs> Didn't have time to suck it in. Well, yes, this is going to be a great fourth quarter. Everybody stay with us because these are two veteran teams playing for the first 5A, uh, 5A championship in the uh, state of Georgia history. So uh, they're going to lay it on the line. Berkmar won the Quad A championship last year, trying to repeat in the largest classification in the state of Georgia. This year is the 5A division. Blue Jackets defeated Berkmar in the 1998 Quad A title. So two teams with a lot of common history. History tonight will record one winner in the 5A division. Final quarter underway as Williams handles out front. Trapped out front. Left side stolen away by Borders. Now it's taken back by Green. Green inside the paint. Left handed. He got it in there. Boy, he switched it right in midair, Herb, and he got the lay in. Something all young players should emulate, be able to use both of those hands. Our sideline reporter Rob Tribble talked to me at the break saying that the Blue Jackets weren't going to take any jump shots in this latter part of the ball game. They just wanted to keep it and get it down low. They did it on the first trip down the floor. Let's see what they do this time down. Williams. Left side. Green. Williams again. Right side at the block. Green inside the paint. Dumps it down low to Brown for the block. Good defensive work by Wayne Arnold, the junior. Arnold kicks it up the floor. Clark Williams cross dribble on Tambon. Hard to the glass. Whistle on the play. Well, Coach Jordan thought there was a lot of contact on the other end when Brown tried to go up. He didn't get the call, and then the contact on the other end gets the call. But, Charles, this kind of game, so well played, low scoring. Every possession feels like it's going to be huge from here on out. Tambon was the blue jacket who was guilty of the foul. Clark Williams to the line. Soft touch on the free throw. He converts. For the second. Got them both. 42-41. Seesaw battle favors Berkmar at the moment. Tambon. Out front. Over to Williams. Tambon left side. on the penetration by Williams. They got Patman on the hold of Sean Hicks. Let's see if it occurred during the shot. It occurred before the shot, so they'll inbound it. Interesting stat. The Blue Jackets haven't shot a free throw since the first quarter. They don't do it on that foul. They inbound it, tried to get it to Cummings. Arnold commits the foul. Foul's on 34, White. Third personal, fourth team. Blue Jackets inbounded out front. Right 
outside all the way through. They left him alone, and he converts. A little bit of a breakdown there on the defense you don't see very often from either of these teams. Took the corner, found the lane, he got the lay in. Hatchman back the other way, Borders left corner. Inside the paint, whistle on the play. Basketball back to the Blue Jackets. Well, with this one-point lead, we're going to have a lot of lead changes. Charles, we're up to 10 now, and uh, get that one-point difference with both teams playing well. Here come the Blue Jackets. Right corner to Brown. Borders and Patman to double team. Now down in the corner, Williams handles. Across the floor, on the move, inside the paint. That's Cummings. Whistle on the play. He bumps off. Got a technical on Coach Jordan. Or the assistant, I couldn't tell who he called it on. He pointed at the bench and... Uh, Take a look at Coach Jordan. He's wondering who it's on. May not have been him. May have been some of the bench coaches, huh? Looks like it went against one of the assistants. That's a big play in such a tight ball game. Oh, it shoots. Two free throws and possession of the ball back. Clark Williams converts on the first. You know, Charles, I guess the coaches and players wouldn't agree, but this wouldn't be a bad game for an overtime. I'd like to see a little more. <laughs> yeah, it's been quite a ball game. Williams got them both. So, Berkmar with the one-point edge. I guess we might want to check with our producers, too, and see if they, they may have something to say about it <laughs> since they've been here all day. We looks like we had another technical call here. The indication was that it was a technical against Coach Jordan. Well, they were both up for best in the call over there. Couldn't see. I think it was on Coach Jordan. A couple of tough calls in the lane. More action coming your way tomorrow from the Macon Centerplex. Class A is Jefferson's Lady Dragons versus Wesleyan Trojans. Double A action, Union County Lady Panthers versus... Greater ACA Lady of Spartans, Greater Atlanta Christian, as you indicate. Gainesville Lady Elephants versus the Northeast Raiderettes. And in the quad A ball game, it's Central Gwinnett Black Knights versus North Atlanta Warriors. And then finally in the 5A, it's Lassiter, the Trojans versus the Eagles of Collins Hill. I'll tell you, Charles, I watched a lot of uh, the girls' games the other day, and it's not going to be many years down the road. Some of those girls, as a matter of fact, Monica Pope, who I saw the other night, can handle the ball as well as anybody I've seen and take it to the basket. Basketball will belong to the Patriots after the technical. They'll get it. Pitchball on the inbound play. Right side, Patman. Now to Arnold with a jumper from 15. Shot it hard. Rebound backside, Williams. That would have been the biggest lead in quite a while if they made that one. Williams. Right side on the move at the baseline with the jumper. Left short by Green. Gets his own rebound, though. So the Blue Jackets keep it there into the floor. Williams at the top of the key to Tambo. Right side, Tambo at the baseline. Jumper shot it. Missed the back side. Rebound to Ekba and the Patriots. They can take it up to three with a basket here. Patman, left side borders. On the weave, Ekba, right side Patman. That's Williams with the jumper up top. Left it flat, right side by Arnold with the put back he missed. Tambon clears for the Blue Jackets. Arnold might like to have that one back again and come down and go up strong with it. He tried to put it up on the fly. Williams, right side Tambon, all the way through to the glass. They wave it off. Will they give him the basket? Well, that's like a foul on Tambon. Let's see if they count it. Well, they're going to wave it off, huh? Looked like he got rid of it before he uh, made contact. On the replay, we'll take a look and see if, in fact, he did. On the penetration. Well, wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> Just not your night, is it? It was very, very, very close. So, Parkmar. Gets the basketball back. Borders works with right side. Patman inside it, but Ickba all the way through slices. And he gets the lay in for the Patriots. Their lead is three now. Green out front. Left side with the pass to Young. On the move at the block. Converged by the Patriots. Whistle. 
It'll be Arnold or Ickda with a foul. Sean raising his hand, saying it was me. Young back in after sitting out with the four fouls. A good job there by Savannah. They absolutely, you felt like they had to have some kind of a score or a basket. They uh, made a nice move to the basket strong and drew the foul. Eric Young, a senior at the line, missed on the front. And Chip Coles back out for the Blue Jackets. You just feel like if the team gets up five or six in this game, it's going to be tough. Wow, look at that. Blue Jackets that didn't shoot a free throw in the second and third quarter. And free throws in a ball game like this, you know they're going to be important. Young gets one of two. Across the timeline, Gordon to the right side for the Patriots. Down at the block. Now they give it to Williams. He missed it on the way in. Boy, a critical miss there by Williams. He knows it as well. Oh, that's a tough call. It looked like both players had their hands on the ball. That's a tough call in my book. Both players going for the rebound. That was great ball movement by Bergmar there. But let's see this rebound, see what happens. Nice wraparound pass by Ekpa. Williams left it on the cylinder. May have been slightly over I was back. right on that one, Charles. <laughs> Thank you. I was right for once. One out of three. That was okay, about my shooting right. percentage. <laughs> As Williams goes to the line, Clark Williams, the senior. Williams connects on the first. Williams has not decided in terms of a college, but you know he'll be going somewhere on the D1 level. His performance on the night, 17 points, 5 rebounds, making 6 of 8 from the line. Savannah needs to answer. 45 remaining. Williams cross dribble, spins left side. Runner to the glass. Off balance and he missed. Williams clears for the Patriots. They tie it up at the block. They'll go and they'll wave it off. They're not going to go to the arrow. They're going to give it to. I think Williams must have been laying on the inline, and that's a big play. Or if it, Savannah didn't score there and Burke Mard come down and scored again, a six point lead in this game is huge. Mopping it up here at the Centerplex. And there's not a thing in this building that gets by our camera crew. <laughs> Green left of the cylinder now to inbound it. How funny comes to Cummings. Left side at the block. And forced Young back out front. Now to Williams for three. Boy, that was that big. That was grande, Charles. He squared and fired and dropped it. Big basket as Patman comes back the other way. He's fouled out front. Yep, the officials are starting to clamp down a little bit now, calling some fouls that maybe they didn't call earlier on in a close, tight ball game at the end. Patman to the line. Take a look at the field goal situation here. Savannah, 20 of 45. Burke Mar, 16 of 28. And look how the change takes place. It evens out right there from the free throw line. Three of four for Savannah. Burke Mar, been there 21 times, make it 22 now. 18 of 21, now 19 of 22 as Patman converts on the first. And you talk about different aspects of the ball game, all bringing it to an equilibrium. You saw it with those stats there. I don't know if Coach Jordan's going to see it that way when they see some steps after the ball game. Patman got them both from the line. Green will work it into the forecourt for the Blue Jackets. The one that you almost hate to see in on the spinner. Green nicely done on the turn. Back to back huge baskets by the Savannah Blue Jackets, and now they got to have a stop. Border, right side for the Patriots. Now to Arnold. Left block Williams to Ekpa. Leaning back, he's fouled. Well, you didn't want to foul in there. Falling away is going to have a tough shot, Charles. So let him go ahead. Yep. They bail him out, and Ekpa, otherwise known as the nuclear deflector for the Patriots, to the line. Tries to see Savannah in his own with uh, being one point down. I thought Bertman might just hold the ball and bring him out of it. Ekman converts on the first. 
free throws will definitely save you. And boy, has it helped the Patriots. He got them both. Have they got another big one? Back the other way, almost taken away by the Patriots. But the Blue Jackets control. Williams out front. Approaching the 2.30 mark remaining. Williams with the jumper. Had to change it in the air. Rattled it. Almost got it there. There's the backside. Put back. Good work inside by Eric Young for the two. Unbelievable hang time by Williams. Almost got that to go down. That rattled and popped out. Young converted. Here comes Clark Williams at the baseline. Tapped out from behind by Mary Brown. So left of the sun, Clark Williams will inbound it. Coach Jordan trying to get Tambon back on the floor as Brown departs. Well, we felt like we might have saved the best one for the last today, Charles, and it's certainly been that way. Yes, it has. Getting the money's worth in this one. Quarters trapped in the corner. They forced a timeout. 2-12 remains in the ball game. There, you know the senior boarders wasn't going to take any chances. When they doubled, he took it immediately. We don't have anybody in the huddles on this timeout, so I guess we get to talk. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Savannah comes back out in that zone. They're in the 2-1-2 just a moment ago, and even being down, I'm surprised that Burkmar didn't make them come out and play. Given the tempo of this ball game, with only 2-12 left and a one-point separation, any feel for who is favored in this kind of situation? Where the momentum stands in this? I've been wrong too many times tonight, Charles, and you're not going to get me on that one, I guarantee you. I'll just say one of these two teams is going to go out of here, and both of them certainly deserve to win this ball game right now. You can say that. Coach Jordan and his troops set to come back for battle. I will say, I bet uh, Savannah comes out man to man here. 31 and 1 on the regular season for the Blue Jackets. Patriots at 28 and 4 on the campaign. You take a look at the timeout remaining with 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Savannah with 3 full. Burkmar with 1 full and 1 30. Well, they'll play zone off the inbounds, excuse me, most teams do. Williams inbounds it to Patman in traffic up to Arnold. He thought three. Now a head fakes runner from 15. He shot it hard. That's a shot there by Arnold, the junior. Questionable shot, Charles. Blue Jackets with a chance to take the lead here. Williams, right side, now on the move. It's Cummings inside the paint. He got it to fall. He was fouled. Well, Clark Williams fouled uh, his arm with his jaw, but nonetheless, it was a foul. John Williams, the junior, on the move. Take a look at it. Inside the paint, no question about the foul. He continued, got it to fall, and that's a big play by the junior Cummings. Cummings for the three-point effort here. He missed on the free throw. Clark Williams clears for Burkmar. Well, it keeps Savannah from pressing after the made free throws, but they're pressing even now. Here comes Borders across the timeline with it now. Guarded by Green out front. On the weave to Arnold. Arnold right side on the move. Cross the limit. Pace oh. sweeps it in for Burkmar. Gorgeous touch on that floater down the lane. Made up for the previous trip down the floor with the basket. Steal in the front court by the Patriots. That's big. They lead it by one. Well, they're going to have to play really tough defense, and if they don't get a steal in a few seconds, they're going to have to go for the foul. 13 lead changes in the ball game. Right now, the lead favors the Patriots. Quarters out front will push the minute mark left in the contest. Patman on the move now. Inside the paint. Back out the borders. I go to about 45 seconds. If I don't have the steal by then, Charles, I'm going to have to go after somebody. Arnold to Patton. Over to Williams. Now to Arnold. Victor, right corner, Patton. They kick it back out. Got the foul now. And you're down one. The senior team is handling this situation well, Burkmar is. Now they commit the foul on the junior, Wayne Arnold. If they had to choose somebody, perhaps Arnold is the best. 
The rest of the players, seniors for Barkmar. We'll see if this situation rattles the junior. Well, they decided to let the clock run on down. They were going for the steal. You can play it either way. Still plenty of time in the ball game, even if he makes both of these. They ran it down to 30 before they committed the foul. Jordan was trying to get it, but Green was edgy. He was going to go ahead and go for it. Shows the drive of this Blue Jacket team, just their headset about what they want to do. No question, they were trying to go toward the basket. Don't miss Georgia's only statewide high school sports and academic program, Prep Sports Plus, Saturday mornings at 11 a.m., right here on GPTV. Who's the host of that show? Anyhow? Some guy that's loitering around in the building here. All right, well, what do you do here, Charles? You up? Maybe they'll tell us. Let's see if we can get inside that hole. Hey, right? Time out. We're going to go pop out. I still need it. Full time. The ball goes in to Eric. Eric, you, you either have it or kick it back out to Harry. Harry, right. when the ball goes back out yeah. to you, drive strong to the best. Don't stop till you get to the best. We got plenty of time. We got plenty of time. Sounds like the first option's inside, and then they don't have it back out. Looks like they were going to get it to Eric Young inside. He's going to kick it back out, and they wanted to take it hard to the hoop. I believe I'd get it in Harry Williams' hands. The miss by Arnold probably changed the situation for the Blue Jackets in terms of what they want to do on this offensive set. Well, they're going inside to hopefully draw the foul and if not take it hard to the basket. If you don't get the basket, maybe get two free throws. Here we go as Green inbounds it. Out front with the pass to Williams. Patriots trying to double team him. Williams, left side, he kicks it on the move now. At the glass, shot short by Cummings. Cummings lost it out of bounds. It'll go to the Patriots of Erkmar. They went down low to Cummings in the left corner. He had a lot of traffic down there. Tried to get the shot up. Good defensive work by Berkmar. Timeout taken by the Blue Jackets. Quick foul. Oh, no doubt about it now. That's all you can do as far as Savannah goes. Berkmar wants to get the ball in the hands of their free throw shooters, and luckily they've got some good ones. They won their semifinal ball game by virtue of the good work they did from the free throw line. They won it in overtime against the Glenn Academy. And it's come down to the same thing here in the finals. Take a look at the timeout situation. Blue Jackets with one full, Berkmar with one of each, full in the 30. Basketball belonging to the Patriots of Berkmar and the possession arrow favoring the Patriots as well. It is difficult to repeat as back-to-back -back champions. The Patriots with just 10 seconds remaining an opportunity to do that. Well, you want to foul. You can almost even foul before he gets the ball inbounds. You've just got to make it quick because uh, if they run any time off this clock, it's going to be almost impossible for Savannah. Arnold will inbound it. They're sending a man down the floor. Borders handles. They catch up with Borders, and the foul's committed by Neary Brown. So Borders will go to the line. Well, you expect Borders, good free throw shooter senior. I expect him to hit both of these. Savannah's still going to have a crack at it. Eight seconds, plenty of time to get the ball up and get a shot. Sure. And you know the Patriots, although they may contest it, are not going to get too close in the three-point effort. Borders gets it on the first. What you don't want to do is make sure you don't foul on the three-point attempt. Absolutely. Borders, the senior oh. rattles, missed the second. The rebound came away to Green. They'll have a look at it here with four. Green behind the arc now. Stolen, almost stolen by Patton Green in the paint for the glass. He missed on it. And the 
And the winners, the Patriots of Berkmar, they squeak by 55-53. They are your 5A champs in the state of Georgia. Unbelievable finish, Charles. I thought that last floater in the lane was going. Just fell off the rim and couldn't get the tip up in time. And unbelievable for Berkmar. Back-to-back -back championships and great, great effort by the Savannah Blue Jackets. Certainly couldn't ask for a better 5A final. But the final tally goes to the Patriots of Berkmar. They win it over the Blue Jackets of Savannah. They repeat this time as 5A champs last year as your quad A champs. An exhausted bunch from Berkmar. But boy, they hung in there with so many lead changes. And they finally got the tempo the way that they wanted it. And David Boyd and his Patriots have done only what one of, only one other team has done, as our Rob Tribble is standing by at sideline. Well, Coach, it wasn't easy, but you got your second straight and a little bit of history also. The first state champion in 5A. Well, we appreciate that. We're also the first back-to-back -back largest classification state champions since 1979. So we're real proud of that. I'm proud of this group. They fought back all year long. We've been down and we've come back. And it's a tribute to those kids. Coach, just talk about the fact your philosophy on defense was working fine in the first half. You were getting the turnovers, but you just couldn't convert the baskets. And you were going nuts with the charging calls. But the second half, it finally came into play. Well, we play the pressure defense hoping to turn the ball over, but we weren't converting in the first half. We did a little better job in the second half. It was a great game. Coach, I noticed you kind of went over there to the Savannah people and flashed two, two fingers. Well, they, they tried to intimidate us late 98. We weren't going to let it happen this time. All right, good. Thanks. Good. Congratulations, Coach. Maybe a three-peat next year. Who knows? Let's go to Jim Janakio. All right, Rob, great job. I tell you what, what a day of basketball it's been. Five boys state championships in the can. Tomorrow, we got five girls' state championship games. Here's a look at the schedule coming up tomorrow on GPTV. The Class A at 12 noon, Jefferson takes on Wesleyan. The Double A, Union County takes on GAC. The Triple A game, the Lady Elephants of Gainesville take on Northeast. Meantime, Central Gwinnett tackles North Atlanta. And finally, in the 5A championship, late tomorrow night, Lassiter and Collins. We want to thank our entire technical crew here in Macon. All the announcers for a great job. Thanks, everybody, for a super job here on GPTV. We hope you've enjoyed the telecast. This has been a presentation of GPTV, recognized around the state as the leader in high school sports television. We'll see you at 12 noon tomorrow. Major funding for the broadcast of the Georgia High School Association Basketball Championships was made possible in part by Georgia Natural Gas. IBEW Local 613. Georgia Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. And by South Trust Bank. Funding for a broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following.